Hi everyone, in the previous topic we've already seen how we can get metals from rocks. If you need a reminder about that, I'll put a link up here now to a previous video. And those rocks are called high-grade ores. In other words, they contain a significant amount of the metal or the metal compound. However, metals are finite resources. One day we may run out because we're using them quicker than they can be replaced. So that means you're now having to explore other ways of getting metals from low-grade ores. They're rocks or even soil that contain only small amounts of the metal. And one of those ways we can do that is phytomining, which uses plants. So I'm going to show you how using a plant like this can extract a metal like copper out of the soil that it's being grown in. The first stage of phytomining is to grow the plant on the soil that may contain the metal or the metal compound. And those metal compounds are taken up by the roots of the plant and they travel up to the leaves where they start accumulating and building up in the plant. The next stage is to harvest those leaves off the plant, knowing that these will contain the metal compounds. And then those leaves are burnt in a furnace. So we're going to come back to this in a few minutes time to see what we're left with after the leaves have been burnt. Once we've burnt the leaves, there's no sign of any metal yet. All it looks like is some burnt ash from the leaves. So in this test tube, I've got the ash from the burnt leaves, from the plant that we saw before. And the next stage is to react that burnt ash with some sulfuric acid. So we'll come back to that and see what would be produced in the process of phytomining in the next stage. After the sulfuric acid has reacted with the ash, we've got now a solution of copper. This is copper sulfate solution. So we've still not got the metal, but we're getting closer to getting the metal. So to get copper from copper sulfate solution, there's two things we can do. We can use a process called displacement, where we put in a more reactive metal into the copper, and that will displace the copper out of the solution. In this case, the more reactive metal is some scrap iron, just an old nail here to try and get the copper. The second process is electrolysis. So I've got two carbon electrodes going into some copper sulfate solution attached to a power pack. And if you need a reminder about electrolysis, then I've got a whole playlist of videos about electrolysis. So we'll leave the displacement and the electrolysis to work for about five minutes, then we'll come back and see what we've made. Let's see if there's any signs of copper. So, first of all, the displacement. If I take the nail out of the copper sulfate solution, we can see here there's some copper forming on the outside of the nail. So that's been successful. And if I turn the power off the power pack, let's have a look at the electrode. It should be the negative electrode where the copper collects. And the negative electrode, remember, is the cathode. And there we have it, plenty of copper there as well. We've seen how plants can be used to extract copper and other metals from low-grade ores in the process of phytomining. The other process that can be used is something called bioleaching. Bioleaching uses bacteria to grow on the soil or the rock and they extract the copper compounds and form a solution just like phytomining. And that solution is called the leachate. Now just like with phytomining, we can then get the copper from the solution using displacement or electrolysis. Now both of these processes, bioleaching and phytomining, use a lot less energy than extracting the metal from its ore by heating with carbon or by using electrolysis in the case of aluminium. However, the drawback is it is quite a slow process because you have to let the plants or the microbes grow and absorb the compounds from the soil or the rock. If you found the video useful, please remember to give it a like. Thank you for watching.